How you doing guys? This is Hybrid Steel of the Rusty Nuts Garage. Thank you very much for joining me in today's video. As you saw by the last video we just released, we just finished off the curvy car and gotta be honest, we made a little bit of money out of it, which was all good. Now, whilst I was stripping this down and this down, I mean we haven't got around to doing this one fully just yet, but this one, we stripped it all down, took the parts out, gave it a wash up. We still need to straighten it out, but we're, we're slowly getting there with this one. Now, this one, we noticed, obviously, they're the same sort of skyline. They're very, very similar in... They're basically twins. The reason why we stripped the car down to basically nothing, we're just getting around to straightening and all set now, is because what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to photocopy this car. So, I'm going to take the rims off and get them recycled, because we don't really need them anymore. And, obviously, we're going to be taking out the water bottles and basically just rebuilding two brand new engines. But all I have to do is take the parts out of this one car, right... And then make a list of everything that's in this car. Because, in fairness, when we bought it, it actually didn't come out too badly. If we just lift it up, I can show you what I'm on about. So, obviously, we'll probably get rid of the rims. Because the rims are jank and I can't be bothered to repair them. But if you look at most of this car, it's pretty much all here. Like, cross members here, this is here, this is there. And it's actually not in half bad condition. Worst comes to worst is what we're going to have to do here is strip everything off look for the missing parts, which I don't think there's many of them, and basically just buy that whole car into that whole car, which means buying double, very, very, if we paint them the same colours, do them the exact same way, exact same colour scheme, we can have a pair of cars here, which is pretty damn cool. So, yeah, we're actually building a set of twins instead of just two separate skylines. Maybe whoever takes this can do a bit more research on the car itself, so we've got all the original paperwork, we can give that to the customer and uh, go from there. This session for the Rusty Nuts Garage, take this car apart, completely written, completely list out everything, build this one back, then build that one, then sell both. Are you with me? All good. So let us begin. I'm Hybrid Still. I run this ragtag garage where we fix and restore all cars, shapes and sizes. This is Rusty Nuts Garage. <sighs> Okay, so this is the one we're going to replace a lot of stuff in. What we need to do first off is we need to move this over to there. And then Steve's set up, ready to go. We're going to weld this car, get it all straight and everything else. Whilst that car's being done, this car gets to be done. We need to strip it all down, all good. And then we're going to basically take an entire inventory of shopping list. And then I'm going to basically, I'm probably just going to go off and do this on my own, but we'll do like the engine strip downs, we'll build the new engines, we'll bit to pieces, and then you'll get to see the cars being put together instead of going through all the crap that we're just about to. Because we're doing two cars straight up, like, it's a lot of work, and there's no point in showing you the whole thing. So the plan is, strip this one down to bare metal, do the same, to, we're going to weld the frame, weld everything else, give it a clear coat and, you know, give it a nice paint work over the top and sort of like keep the frame good. And then at some point we'll decide on what colours we're going to go with and everything else. But for now, it's a lot of work and we've got to strip down an entire car and then we've got to buy double the amount. So hopefully we've got enough money to do this because it's going to be a lot of cash. Let's get it on, shall we? Okay, so we're working into the engine now, and basically what we have to do is strip everything down off this engine. And then, whatever we can repair, we will, but then when it comes to everything we've repaired, we still have to buy everything again. 
The main reason is because I'm basically doing an engine swap with the other car. So, uh, like I said at the beginning, when the engines were two, they're, they're two different engines, but very, very similar cars, like very similar cars. So, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the standard car into a turbo car. This has got a turbo on it as well, and that's the job. That's what we're going to do for the other one as well. So, what I might just do is just build an entire list of everything I need off these cars and then just build two brand new engines. On the plus side, it just means that they'll be brand new, it's all good, whoever buys them has got two fantastic engines, or one fantastic engine, and someone else has another one. But, it just means that everything on these cars will be practically new, apart from the chassis, which, you know, they're, they're getting straightened out, it's all good. So Steve got back with the chassis the other day, and he's done a really good job. This one we just kept with the standard, this one we kept with the standard as well. We just washed it back and made, filled in the gaps of paintwork, basically. Apart from that, it's not too bad. You know when you spend like way too much in a shop and you're sort of fearing that all of it's just about to get washed down the pan? That's pretty much where I'm at. We just bought uh, two entire cars worth of stuff. It makes you think that how much you spend on cars is one of those things that you just go, maybe we spend too much, but it should be worth it in the end. We've spent in a region of 60 grand for both of these cars like all of the bodywork all of the interior all of the wheels rims suspension everything else and bits and pieces so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put all the rims together and all the suspension parts together and then we go back to rebuilding and that's going to be part of the joys we've got to rebuild two cars that should be fun okay so welcome back to the garage of dreams uh, well you know here at rusty nuts basically so since the last time I spoke to you, which for you was probably only a couple of seconds ago, but for me it was a good couple of, well, probably about a day. So what we've done is we got the cars back from body, which was nice. We painted the whole thing black. And the reason why is just because I had that little spot of inspiration of like, hmm, I wonder where we could go with this. And you remember in Fast and the Furious with all black cars, I know they were all like Honda Civics, but sort of paying homage to that as well just in my own twisted way this isn't a money grab of like how oh, i made two fast and the furious cars this is just like i'm making a set of twins i want them to be exact so what i've done is i've spent too much money on parts as you can tell we've got parts after parts after parts we've got 24 and a half pages full of parts and that's basically everything that should go into this car i should i should have enough money well, no, I should have enough parts to build two um, DHC, DOHC turbo engines. So I'm going to whack those together now. And basically what I'm going to do is a little bit of studio magic, where on the screen you'll see both builds happening at pretty much the same time. Let's get into this, shall we?
all good. That's both of the engines completely built. And that actually didn't take too long. I, I genuinely thought that was going to take a little bit longer than that. So what we'll do now is we'll attach the engines to both the cars and then we'll be moving on. And it's all good. At the end of the day, this is it's going to take a little bit longer and it looks like it's going to cost like a hell of a lot more because, well, I'm making two cars instead of one. And that's the whole big problem here. It's trying to get these both out at the same time. The reason why is because they're a set. Well, the way I see them, they're a set. Let's put it that way. At the end of the day, I've never had two cars this close to each other in like miles per, you know, how many miles they've done and so on and so forth. So it's actually quite nice to be, to be building what I can only go with is a set of twins. So next on the agenda, after we've put in the engine, is to basically slap everything on the bottom of each one. Like I said, we've been we've bought all the parts and we're doing all right. Okay, that's um, most of car number one. We're waiting for panels and bits and pieces to come back. It's been it's been a couple of days slogging putting this one back together, but we're getting there. We went with some of these like 20 inch rims, really low profile, big set of rims and I'm not sure why but hey we just thought we'd go with the flow on this one as well. But we got exactly the same setup to do in this car as well. Main reason for it is just because, I've got to be honest, it's easier to build two exact replica cars in this game and I'm going to refer to it as a game for just this section, is that it's easy to buy two exact kits for two cars and the reason why is because you don't have to keep jarring d different bits and pieces and doing this, that and the other. This it, this car will work as a secondary car as well. I don't have to put as much effort into looking for parts. All I had to do was order two exact replicas of everything I was buying. The other Skyline we've got out the front of the shop, eh, it, that will be a little bit different. And the reason why is because the engines are different, it's got a bit more power behind it. Um, it's a modified car, which basically means that someone stuck an engine in it and uh, let it go hell for leather, basically. Which is all I'm looking for. We're looking for a good bit of money. And like I said, all the money that we're going to be raising from these three cars alone is literally going towards the McLaren F1. And when we've sold that, this shop takes an entirely new direction. We can start looking into proper restoration and uh, really doing something, you know, fairly good here. Dude, how to change the shape of a car? That looks... Oh, look. Before. After. Before. After. How cool does that look? Right, okay. We'll do the same over here. Let's take the back end off first. We'll do this over. And then we'll put the front end back on. Because, I mean, that looks just sweet. Right, okay. So what I need to do now is I need to send these over to paint. And there we go. A set of Nissan Skylines. So, they're basically identical cars. Apart from one has an intercooler, the other one doesn't. Apart from that, they are pretty much the same. But here's the difference in price. This one is the one that... This is the Miso, so this is the one that with the intercooler, and it's worth 89 grand. And this one is the standard, and it's worth 83 grand. So, six grand difference just because that one's got an intercooler, and that one hasn't. Same speed, same engine, same everything. And I'm going to be honest, that was fun to work on. I enjoyed that. Cheers, man. Thanks for the left. Awesome. So we're back from Kowalski's. The car's got, you know, we did a right down there, but we, we're back up to 100. We're back up 170, which wasn't bad. And we've still got a load of parts we need to sell off. And then we know a couple of guys around here that actually need them, so we can sell them off in bulk and put that money towards it. So the next video, uh, the next like the step in this ev whole evolution thing is this one. Now the reason why this is going to be a separate video altogether is just because of this. This engine makes this car so much better. And at the end of the day, this is the Miso SV8, which means it's a different model. It's a different car basically altogether. And boy, does it pack a punch. I'm either tempted, I may even just keep this down as the V8 DOHC, which isn't too bad of an engine, but we could stick the DOHC supercharged in it. And let me just give you a, a round off of what this actually is. So let's find it. Do, do, do. So this is the V8 DOHC. This one puts out 584 horsepower. We could stick that engine in the car just to give it a bit more oomph but i think i want to try and save some money on this one so what i want to do specifically is maybe um 
see if we can clean all of these bits up, see if we can reuse them. Obviously, we'll get this car welded up and cleaned up, and hopefully it'll be fine. Um, that's what I'm hoping. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it has seen, obviously, it has seen better days. But in the grand scale of things, it's better than the last two we just got rid of. Because the last two, when we found them, were in absolutely horrendous condition. So hopefully, we can make something of this one and put it out a bit cheaper. As I said, I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to spend more than like 20 grand on this car. Which basically means we're going to be looking at like rejuvenating the car instead. So I want to say a massive thank you for popping by. It's been most appreciated for you to put up with this one. I know, you know, we did basically two cars exactly the same. But, you know, we all go down these routes to make the most out of it. And don't forget that the main reason why we're doing this is because of that McLaren F1. When that car sells, eventually, when we get around to fit, uh, doing it, yeah, we're doing all right. The downside is we've got we've got to order in that body kit now. The reason why is because it's going to take a long time to get here. That body kit for the McLaren is custom built, and we have to basically get the entire shell made first before we take it apart. So join us in this run. As I said, we've got this one to do, and then hopefully we'll have enough money to do the McLaren, and then our lives are going to change here for the better so thank you very much for kicking by this has been hybrid steel of the rusty nuts garage i want to say thank you very much for kicking it means the most thank you very much for all the support you're showing this channel and this garage as well it means it means so much you have no idea until my next one guys i want to say peace out have fun enjoy everything you guys do i'll see you later boom fist bump to you